Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create instances of meshes. This has a lot of far reaching applications. If you want to create just a, like, let's say an auditorium or some kind of mass assets like this, this could be for a, you know, a concert hall or lots of soldiers or plants or any kinds of static meshes that you want to arrange in a columns and rows like this and it's super cool and it could save you a ton of time in creating an environment and so I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to do this this isn't very hard okay I'll be right back okay I'm back and to get started on this what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go into games a blank project and we do want starter content and this can just be a blank project and I'm just gonna call this instances or instancing I guess and we'll just go create I'm not gonna say the last project I just did and we are going to get going with this so they also call this procedural generation but coming from 3d I see it more as I just call it instancing but they call it the fancier name I guess it sounds more exciting is procedural generation either or tomato tomato potato potato <laughs> Okay, so to get started with this, I wonder if we're gonna have the dock in layout issue. So let's go to content browser, dock in layout. Let's see if it docks, it doesn't. So to fix that, we just go to viewport here, uh, load layout, default editor, and it resets. And then when we go content drawer, dock and layout, it docks in the layout. Now what we need the starter content for is it just has meshes in it and there's a chair in there. So we're just gonna use a chair as an example, but honestly you could, you know, any mesh you wanted to use, you could use for this uh, example. This particular example, foliage or trees or soldiers or tanks or, you know, literally almost anything that you can imagine, anything that's a static mesh. All we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the content level here and that's just where we'll be right there. And we're just going to right click here and we're going to create a blueprint. So we're just go to blueprint, actor, and we'll just call this BP underscore instancer. Let's just call it instancer because that's kind of what it is. And then we'll just double click on it. It doesn't dock automatically, so we'll dock it up there. And we dock because it makes it easy to switch between our files. There's no better way to get around than docking. So to get started with this, we actually need a number of variables. So we might as well go ahead and get that out of the way first. And the first thing that we actually need is a static mesh object reference. And that kind of is built in already to Unreal Engine. So we're just going to click here under variables. There's actually five variables that we're going to need to do this so actually six I take that back so there's a few so but it'll go pretty fast and you'll see how fast it goes in just a minute here what we're going to do is we're just going to click on the variable button and we're just going to call this one B reference I don't know there's another static mesh like that I, I don't like the way that looks I'm going to I'll just go SM underscore reference okay and then what we're going to do is under the type we'll click there and we're going to search for a static mesh and you'll see what i mean it's built what i mean by built in you type in static mesh and we just scroll down a little bit and there it's right there and we want an object reference to the static mesh you can go ahead and make it instance editable too and we can go ahead and compile and save that once we do, you'll see over here we have a default value. And here, when we're here, we can go ahead and click and search for whatever item we want to mass produce. So here it's just the chair. And so that takes care of that. And what we're really going to be doing is looping through. We're going to be using some for loops to loop through X and Y coordinates. Then that's what will control our placement and the variables that we're getting ready to create. You'll see in just one second here. So let's start and create the rest of our variables. And we're basically creating our own instancer. So it's almost like we're, we're creating our own kind of functionality or asset, our own machine in a, in a way. So anyway, let's get started with this. 
you think of we're going to be laying things out in columns and rows, and so we need we need to tell we need to tell the instancer that we're making how many instances we want per row, the distance between the instances, and how many rows we want, and things like that. So that's what these variables are going to do. So let's go ahead and crank these out. So the first one we're going to want is really the space between the rows and the space between the instances. So we're just going to call this space between instances and this is going to be a float value uh, type I mean I should say and it needs to be public and then rather than retyping everything all we have to do is just click on it and hit D and it's going to be a float and this is going to be space between the rows so we just backspacing there or deleting there so we got our space between the instances, the space between the rows, and then we need to also create another one. So I'll hit Control D, and this is going to be actually our instance location on the X coordinate, and we'll just do that. And we can go ahead and hit Control D again, and now we need to know how many instances we want per row. So we're going to instances per row, but this is not a float, this is going to be a whole number, so that's going to be an integer. And lastly, I'll hit Control D, and we're going to want to know how many rows do we want. So we can just call this number of rows, or rows, just rows. And we'll go ahead and compile and save that. And then we can just leave that for that, for right now. Now one difference between, I want to take this moment to explain a very technical point and thank you for listening and not getting, uh, <laughs> blowing me off. When you have an object reference, one thing I've learned is that a, usually an object reference cannot be set to null or void or zero. So you notice we set it over here to a static mesh chair. Usually we'll get into problems with object reference variables, they cannot be just blank. They cannot be null. And there's a node that we use to check for that in software called is valid. So that checks to see that the object reference actually has something in it. A lot of times you'll get cannot access blueprint. You'll get an error. And the reason that is, is that your object reference is not set. And that comes up. I've had that problem so many times over the, can I now say years, that I just had that drilled into my head. Now that's as opposed to these variables these variables can be null, so we don't have to put values in here, but um, for them to work, you know. But we might want to pop some values in here just to keep everything from piling up on each other, you know. So we could pop some values in here now, but they're not going to stay, so it doesn't really matter. Once we drag this blueprint into our scene they're going to, we're going to have to set those values there. So I'm not going to worry about setting these variable values. So that's just a side note, a little technical side note. So now once that's done, we can jump over into our viewport here. We got our variables and we are, oops, not there, here. Sorry about that. Our viewport. And we're going to search for instanced static mesh. I didn't even know these existed. So if you had a static mesh that had a LOD attached to it, you'd want this hierarchical one, but there is no LODs attached to this, so we're just going to go with the instant static, static mesh there. And once we have that set, I don't believe I don't believe there's anything else. Do we need to set the chair here? I don't believe so. Let me double check something here real fast. No, we don't. So we just need to have that there. So we're going to fill that in. So there's nothing else we need to do other than just add that component. So we'll compile and save that. And that takes care of that. And then what we're going to do is, although I'm wondering why we don't see the chair here, you know, it seems like we we do have, I guess if we put a value in here, we would see it. I guess we could pop something in there and just see what happened. Put a chair in there, but see, it doesn't, if we compile and save it, we still don't see anything. So it doesn't matter if that's 
set or not. So we'll just go ahead and reset that. So we'll just leave that set to none. But we, it's interesting that we don't see anything. We're going to go into the construction script. Let me compile and save. And this is where really most of our work is going to be. So construction scripts are something that creates something upon the game starting. So you don't see them that often, but sometimes you do. So this will, it's just what it says. It constructs something before the game kind of starts. So here we're going to be getting all of our variables now. So we're going to start with getting our instant static mesh. One of the tips and tricks here is we have our choice of get or set. We're going to get get. But if you hold control, I believe, it just gets the that node. It gets the get node right away. And then alt and drag gets the set node. So that can save you a lot of time when you start working on bigger projects. Now we're going to right click, or we can drag off of here, excuse me. And we're going to search for something on set static mesh this right here and then our wait, we don't want this one how do we get that one we don't want that one I got the wrong one there I don't want the default I want the instance and I want this static mesh reference sorry about that that was my mistake so we want the static mesh reference going into new mesh and the instance mesh and then we'll plug this one in there Sorry about that. And next what we're going to do is we're going to get a, a for loop and our rows. So we're going to get our number of rows. Hit control and drag and it comes in as a get node. And then we're going to right click and search for a for loop. So just get a for loop. Oops, how come I don't see it? I'm not spelling right, that's why. It's not for an array, it's this one right here. And there's no break. And then we're just going to, it's going to start from zero. We're going to plug this in here, our exec pin in here. And then the number of rows is going to go in there. And that takes care of that. And then where there's one more for loop, we got to go. Now we're going to get the hit control and we're going to get the space between the rows. And then we're going to drag off of here and multiply this by our index value. And these wires are going to kind of cross right there, but that's okay. And then we're going to go ahead and set our X position value, which is instance location X. So we're going to hold Alt, click and drag, and we get our set node. And that goes in there. And this exact pin goes in there like that. And believe it or not, we only have a few more things to go, and we're done. we got one more for loop to do. So we're going to get a instances per row now. We're going to set our instances per row, and hit Control and drag, and we get that one. And then we're going to get, well, rather than get another for loop, I can just hit Control D and duplicate this one and drag it over here. And we're going to do the same exact thing we did here, except... This is the rows, and these are the instances per row. So we're just duplicating what we just did. So one's kind of, so it makes sense if you think about it, right? Like how many do we want per row and how many rows are there? And this will just go through the values that we're gonna plug in here. So once we put in 10, we'll have 10 rows, and then they'll all be spaced apart by the values that we enter. So this will become clearer in just a minute. And then we want to get our instance location X again. So hold control and drag, pop that in like that. And then we want to get our instant static mesh, control and drag that one into. And believe it or not, we're almost on the home stretch here. And the last thing we're wanting to get is the space between the instances. And so we're going to hit control and drag that in there. So we need these three variables, the instance static mesh, the instance X location, location X, and this one. And then again, we're going to do what we did is we're going to multiply this value, the space, the instance spaces by the index value. So we're going to go multiply and get our operator there and just pop this into here. And right now, since everything's zero, there would be no space between anything. And lastly, and this is really, I guess, the star of the show, as far as nodes go, is we're going to go add instances. 
and it's going to be for the static mesh. So actually, I didn't need to bring that in there. So that was my mistake. So go add instances, and the static mesh will come in wired up already, so we didn't need to do that. And then all we're going to have to do is we want to split this struct here, and then we're going to want to split it again. So we're going to split it again. So we double split it. <laughs> And here we go. And then this is where we kind of have our X and Y coordinates now. So we're going to plug this one into X and this one into Y, like that. And believe it or not, that's it. So if you want to, I don't know how well you can see this. If you want to take a screenshot of it, that is our functionality to create columns and rows of an un limited amount of static meshes. So I do see I need to plug that exact pin in there. So I see we're all wired up. Everything looks good. We'll compile and save. I don't get any errors. Fantastic. Now we're on the home stretch. So what we're going to do now is we're here in the open world. Here's our blueprint. And all we have to do is drag it onto the scene. And there's our chair. And then you'll see here's all our values that we need to enter. So I just know from experience that the space between the instances. The space between the instances is a good starting value is like 100 for that. And you can play around with different values here. And the space between the rows, a good one is 150 to start. And now once those values set, we just say how many, oh, we don't actually don't need this one as a public variable. So actually, if I want to go back and change that to private, because I don't want to accidentally that's with that. So let's compile and save that and get rid of that one. Okay, so now we have instances per row. So here's where you're in complete control. Just how, how big do you want this thing and how many things do you want per row? Well, let's just say we start with 10. And let's say we want 10. So 10 and 10. 100 chairs. Just like that. And what's crazy about this is, I mean, this could go, this could go nutso, right? I mean, you could go crazy with this. Just like that, how long would that take you to put lay out 100 chairs like that? A long time. So let's say let's say you want to do 20 chairs, or let's say you want to do 40 chairs. I don't know if I'm going to get issues here, but look how how much work would that take to create this see this this many chairs? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a lot. That would be a lot of work. But look how many. I haven't pushed the system to see how many instances it can take, but anyway, you get the idea. So all you got to do now is just play with the values, you know how to do it, and you can create mass worlds, mass things, and other programs, they have different ways of doing this exact same thing, but this is how you do it in Unreal Engine. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful, take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.